Hey guys, it's Elena. So it's the middle of winter. You probably would know that, <laughs> but I'm missing summer so bad. And so I decided to make a cute gingham puffy sleeved summer dress just so I can remind myself of what I don't have. <laughs> uh, I'm going to walk you through everything I did so you can make something just like this and I hope you like it. So when I started this project, I had an idea of what I wanted the dress to look like, but I didn't own any patterns that had exactly what I wanted, so I just used this McCall pattern as kind of a rough outline. So I used the bodice, I didn't change anything about that, and then I changed the sleeves a little bit. I used their sleeve pattern, it's just a really generic sleeve pattern. Um, but I did make a little change to it and I'll show you basically how to take a normal sleeve and turn it into a puffy sleeve. Basically what you want to do is widen the bicep part of your sleeve and then you will want to flatten and widen at the shoulder. So you can see here you want the bicep to be longer just because you want some extra fabric to be able to bring in and then you want to add additional fabric at those corners so that when you gather it at the shoulder, it will turn into a really nice, cute puff. I went ahead and cut out just two rectangles for the front and the back skirt, and then I have a facing for the front and back neckline, just so that I have a really nice finished neckline. And once you cut everything out, this is everything that you'll need. Some bodice pieces, neck facing, two sleeves, and two skirt panels. To get started, I went ahead and took my bodice pieces and pinned and sewed them together along the shoulder seams. You should be doing this right sides together. And just a side note, when you are cutting out your fabric, because I'm using a gingham pattern, you do have to be really careful and conscious about how you're cutting things. So make sure that you are cutting along with the line so that everything is gonna be straight when you sew it all together. Once you have done the shoulder seams, you can go ahead and do a long basting stitch just along the top of that shoulder of your sleeve and then pull on the string so it gathers a little bit. That part doesn't have to be perfect because the next step is to pin that sleeve to your bodice front and back. So I usually line up the corner of the sleeve and then just ease in that ruffle into that uh, shoulder seam and make it tighter or looser just so that it fits and it will look really cute and puffy like you see it there. Once you've got both sleeves in along the top of that sleeve, you can put together your bodice and sleeves at the side seam. So this is very important. <laughs> Make sure you are lining up those gingham stripes so that when you lift up your arm, it looks as even as possible. And also try to line up that sleeve seam so that it all is looking nice and straight. Next is the skirt. So we luckily have just a front panel and a back panel. So you want to first sew them together at the side seams. That way you have one giant skirt hoop. <laughs> because we are making a gingham summer dress, we obviously want a gathered skirt. <laughs> so go ahead and do a very long basting stitch all along the top of your skirt panels and then do a second basting stitch just about a quarter of an inch below your first one and then you can pull on the two top strings and start gathering that skirt. You don't have to be super precise at this point just because you will be lining it up to your bodice like we are here. Make sure that you have your bodice inside and it's right sides together. 
line up your side seams and then start adjusting your gathering stitch so that it's all nice and equal along and then you can pin it so that they're stuck together and then go ahead and do a normal straight stitch all along that gathered edge so that we have a really nice cute ruffled skirt. Like always, I ran out of bobbin thread at the most inconvenient time. I swear this happens to me every single project at least once, if not twice. So just make sure you're filling your bobbin completely and <laughs> don't go too far without making sure that your thread is catching completely. The next step is to finish our neckline. So take your two neck facing pieces and sew them together at those raw edges. And you can use your normal seam allowance so that it will match up the right length that your neckline is at. Put that longer piece towards the back of your dress and the shorter rounded piece at the front and put it right sides together and match up at the side seams and then pin all the way around to secure it, make sure it doesn't move at all. And then you can do a stitch all the way around. I did use a shorter seam allowance this time and you do want to sew down into a little dart V shape in the back so that we have a spot to slit so that we actually can fit our head through this neck hole. <laughs> Once you have sewn all the way around, you are going to cut down into that dart shape and make sure that you don't go too far and clip that seam, but you do want to get as close as possible so that it doesn't pucker at all. And then I am folding it over and then pinning all along the top so you can see we have a really nice finished edge. And then I am doing a small top stitch all the way around. Get it as close to the edge as you can and this will really finish it off and make it look really crisp and clean and professional looking. The next step is to finish off the rest of our raw edges. So right now I am going through and doing a double folded hem along the bottom of my skirt. So I folded it over about a half inch and then folded it over again and pinned and ironed all the way around. Also do make sure that you are lining up your hem with that gingham line stripe thing <laughs> so it doesn't look all uneven and crooked when you're wearing it and then you can go ahead and do the exact same thing for the sleeves i did want to trim my sleeves just a little bit so i cut off a few inches first and then did a double folded hem all the way around and instead of folding about a half inch both times i folded about a quarter inch Try it on, make sure you like all the links of everything, and then you can sew along and secure those hems. I wanted puffy sleeves on this dress, so I took a, about a quarter inch wide elastic and wrapped it around my bicep and trimmed it so that I could get a good width for that. And then I sewed it together using a super short zigzag stitch. And then I pinned it to my sleeve, leaving a couple inches overlapping so that I could have a little ruffle on the edge. And I thought it turned out pretty good. So make sure that you're lining it up with that gingham stripe so that it is even 
And then I went ahead and used a short zigzag stitch all the way around to attach it and that way it would be very secure and not move around at all. The final step is to attach a button to that neck opening. So I found these adorable cream bunny buttons from Joann's. I love them so much. So I finally had an opportunity to use it. So I just sewed that on to the corner edge and then sewed a little loop to go around it. I will attach a link in the description box below of a tutorial that I used and I'm happy to make one if you would like one for me as well. This is the final look in all its puffy gingham glory. <laughs> this turned out to be such a cute little springy Easter dress, even though it's like the middle of winter still, <laughs> but whatever, I'm living my Easter dreams. So I hope you love this tutorial. I think it turned out really, really cute, and I hope that you were able to learn something as well. If you'd please like and subscribe, it would really help me out and support this channel. And thank you so much for watching.